Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. So in this lecture, I have to explain to you why it's important to have routing in our network. And when I say routing, that means we need to have a router because the router can do the routing. So let's imagine that we have this network. We have two switches connected to each other and each of the switches, they have over here a network that is the LAN, all right? So now, if we think of it, like in case we have a computer here, with this computer A and this computer B. All right. So in case they want to reach to each other, then it's no problem. He sends his traffic to this uh, switch over here and the switch open his MAC address table. He has the port and he has the MAC address and then he can send it to here and it comes to B. Same do if you want to send from B to A. Also, this switch open his MAC address table. He has the port and the MAC address and this is he send it like this and it reached to the A. So in this case, we shouldn't really care too much about the routing, all right? Because we have only one computer over there. But what if we do have, for example, 500 computers here and here also 500. So that means that those switches, they need to have 500 entries inside of them to be able to make the resolving from the uh, port to the MAC address. What if we have, for example, the internet? You have to think of it like all the internet is now connected via switching layer two, because on layer two works the MAC address. So then in this case, the switches, they should have in their MAC address table, the MAC addresses of all the devices which are on the internet, which is impossible because the switch is not having the capability to do that. Also, the switch is not having the capability to do that or any other switches as well. So, and uh, that's one of the thing that uh, you don't have enough uh, resources on the switch to be able to handle all the MAC addresses, to be able to see all the MAC addresses of all the devices in the world. So th this is one of the problem that uh, in case you only have switching, then you may encounter. Let me clear it here so I can just put the uh, information so uh, we can put here one the mac address table so the mac address table is not enough for that all right so that's one problem problem number two let's imagine again that we have this network and uh, also we can think that we are connected to the internet and in case one of the devices over here make a broadcast the broadcast can happen right so once the broadcast is coming to the switch then the switch will send it to here because it will be flooded to all its port and come here and this will receive the broadcast and then it has to flood it to all its port which are connected so let's imagine that this switch have many ports connected to to many switches and it will go and go and go and go and go the broadcast without stopping so when we have a broadcast then in this case remember when it is a broadcast then we have the network is down so that's also another problem that in case we only have switches that we have problem when a broadcast uh, happen and the broadcast will happen in the network so that means all the networks if you have the internet all connected to the switching then all the network will be down and that's also something we can't have it because in case this happens then uh, we don't have internet connected anymore and that's something we would say that we can't really have only switches in case we want to have the internet or in case we have a big network so that's another problem that can happen that the switch cannot stop the broadcast we remember that that uh, the switch cannot stop the broadcast and in case a broadcast uh, will happen then all the network will be down so that's another problem that in case we don't have router because the router we know that he can eliminate the broadcast he can stop it and it will not forward it to the other ports then in case we don't have router then this will happen the other problem that may encounter is that let's imagine that this switch can handle mm, a lot of mac address let's just imagine that so uh, then uh, well, let's forget about the broadcast problem now let's imagine that he can handle all the mac address and uh, this switch uh, is connected to uh, for example they are connected to the internet to all switches we don't have routers so every switch has in his mac address table all those mac addresses let's imagine it's possible that he can handle it but in fact it's not possible but just uh, to imagine that it's possible so in this case this switch will have all the entries in his mac address table and this switch also will have all the entries in his MAC address table. So every time any PC want to send 
something to the internet, then this switch has to make a look up to check all the MAC addresses, which are millions and billions and billions of devices which are on the internet, it has to check every time all those MAC addresses to reach to the destination that this uh, PC want to send it, then that's also not possible because in this case, uh, you will have a lot of delay on the internet because the switch has to check every time for all the MAC addresses to reach to the MAC address that this PC over here want to send it to the destination. So that's another also problem here, which is uh, we can uh, call it, for example, uh, MAC address lookup. So it has to look for the MAC address to where it needs to send it. And uh, this takes a lot of uh, time to happen, which is impossible. So those are the three problems that uh, we will have, uh, in case we only have switching in our network, which are the MAC address uh, table, which becomes very big, and uh, there is no resources for the switch to be able to handle all these entries in the MAC address table, the broadcast, and the MAC address lookup. So now, how can we solve this problem? To solve this problem, we require to have a router in between the switching network. So we have here two networks, for example, here is a network, and here is a network. Let's imagine that this network has an IP address here of 192.168.1.0/24, and this one is having 192.168.2.0/24. All right. So now what's going to happen is that this is a router over here because it's directly connected to the uh, switch 2 and to switch 1, then he knows about those two networks. So those two networks, the router knows them and he put them in something we call it the routing table. Routing table, you have to think of it as like the MAC address table on the switch, but this is based on the IP address. On uh, You can see we have IPs here and not MAC address. And he will say that, all right, 192.8.2.0 is connected to this port, and uh, he will say 192.168.1.0 is connected to this port. All right. So now what's going to happen is that let's imagine we have here 100 devices and here we have 100 devices. So any traffic coming from here to the router going to 2.0, then it's not anymore looking to the MAC address table, but he will check to the IP. Okay. This is coming from 192.168.1.0. Where is going? going to 2.0. So we check in this routing table. Oh, I know about 2.0. It has to go from this interface, which is this one. And then he will forward it to here. And then this switch will resolve it on the MAC address and he will send it to here, to the destination. So this is what the router can do. He do the routing and it is based on layer three. You can see based on the IP address. So what he will do is just have the IP address in his routing table. And as he knows about the, the destination and then he can forward it to there. Now, while it is connected like this, because this network is directly connected, so you can see that it is directly connected to here, and it is directly connected to here. When it is connected, the router can resolve it directly. He can see it, it's connected to him. But some networks, they are not connected directly to the router. And in this case, we have to do some routing protocol. We have to use uh, whether the static route or whether the uh, uh, dynamic routes, okay? So something like this, if we have this router connected to another router and this router over here has a switch and this switch has a network here. So this is router one, this is router two, and this is the switch. Router two knows about this network because it's connected to him directly, but router one doesn't know about this network. Let's say that is network A. So in this case, we are required to do some configuration so then at the end, router one knows also about this network. So in case he has a network connected to him and this is a PC here, let's say here is B and he wants to go to A, then this router, router one will know in his routing table how to reach to the network A. And here we have to do the configuration ourselves, whether we do it statically or we can do it using some dynamic routing protocol. All right, so that's uh, to explain to you why we need to have routing. So we understand now why we need to have routers, because if we don't have a router, 
which works on layer 3 we cannot have routing and if we don't have routing we will fall onto the problems that I have showed you a few minutes ago in the, this lecture and uh, then we have a problem so we require to have the router because the router works on layer 3 and the switch works on uh, the uh, layer 2 which is the MAC address with the router we can do routing for the packets so this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture why we need to have the router and i have explained to you if we don't have the router what problem can happen if we only have switches so i hope that uh, this lecture was informative for you and the upcoming lecture i have to start doing the routing protocol which is uh, the uh, static one starting first with the static and the, the, the default route so uh, i hope that this lecture was informative for you and i will see you in the upcoming lecture